Hello, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bar Tits Lab. I hope you've had an amazing Christmas and welcome to Boxing Day. And as it's Boxing Day, I wanted to talk about one of my favourite boxing approaches, and that is the approach of the Diaz brothers. Now, I spent a lot of time looking at historical boxing, bare boxing, pugilism, from the 1600s all the way through to the late Victorian era. But I also keep a strong focus on, a strong eye on, what people are doing today in pugilistic disciplines. One of my favourite approaches is how the Diaz brothers use unorthodox boxing to gain success against people who are relatively better boxers or better fighters. How do they gain absolute critical damage, critical volume, using their unorthodox strikes, their unorthodox boxing? And I want to pull apart some of the motifs, techniques and strategies they use to achieve that because there is brilliant crossover into some of the bare knuckle disciplines which I predominantly focus on. So, one of the main differences is when you look at most people that are trained in boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, we all have a relatively similar structure. So when we cross, we turn our shoulders, we turn our hips, we turn our knees, we turn our feet, you know, we turn, boom, boom. We keep ourselves pretty anatomically tight, like so. So there is, you know, a pretty basic way in which most people box and strike and comport themselves, which tends to deliver great damage, great mass, great penetration. The Diaz brothers don't give a fuck. What the Diaz brothers do is they treat striking, especially fist striking, as if they were throwing. Humans are very good at throwing. It's a very natural reaction. And we tend to throw faster than we punch. We very rarely do a punching action but throwing and catching, these types of things we've been doing since very small children. We do them all the time. And so what the Diaz brothers do is essentially throw their punches as if it were a ball. Overhand, kind of horizontally, and also underhand. So everything is treated as if they were throwing a ball. And if you imagine the knuckles are the ball in this instance, and the arm is the delivery mechanism. So what they're doing is throwing their knuckles onto the target, throwing their knuckles onto the target. And what that does actually makes it very good for getting your knuckles to be the primary weapon that lands first. When we think of throwing the punch as opposed to driving the punch in, often the knuckles will be the thing that lands really well. So one of the great benefits and crossover benefits of Diaz Brothers style boxing is that the knuckle discipline Whilst the punches look sloppier than orthodox boxing approaches, they in fact have very good knuckle alignment. We tend to get knuckles on target really well in this thrown style. Okay, so things to practice is try and change up your traditional boxing body mechanics and move into an overhand throw, a horizontal throw, and an underhand throw, and then just add the punch at the end of it. you'll actually find that your knuckle striking surface lands pretty well. You do sacrifice some science, you do sacrifice a fair bit of mass, and you do sacrifice a fair bit of torque. But what you make up for that is with speed, you end up with pretty good speed. And when you think of throwing as opposed to striking, typically your hip, your knee, your shoulder, all the things that you should activate, activate pretty naturally because it's such a natural motion. So again, to throw the ball, to toss the ball this way, these are so natural, the body just goes with it. Whereas people tend to need to be taught how to move offline, how to step with things, how to drive power. Throwing a ball, very instinctive. And so throwing a ball is a very good way to get into the spirit of Diaz Brothers style boxing and get your knuckles on the target in the best possible way. So let's look at some of the factors which they use. So, typically, they'll have their hands down low, or they'll have their hands cycling open palm. Now, let's start with the cycling open palm. Now, these hands are really good at just throwing shit into the machine. What the Diaz brothers are really good at doing, and defeat technically superior strikers, is the hands are in motion, which replicates the milling of bare knuckle boxing, early pugilism, so the hands are always in motion, and the hands, are touching, poking, prodding, and provoking 
the hands of their opponent. So the opponent's hands are up, typically in a slightly more rigid sense, and they're toying with those hands. They're pulling them, grabbing them, compressing them, essentially causing them to not have a clear line of sight, not having a clear shot at you. So the hands, when they are in play, they're cycling. So they're getting used to, if you've ever done any grappling, that hand fighting phase. That hand fighting phase is also quite good for striking. They're throwing shit in the machine. You can't pull off your clear shots because the hands are always touching or interfering, pushing, pulling, dragging, compressing against your own, which is very frustrating for a lot of fighters and not something most people come across. So you get this kind of pouring motion, this milling, this pouring motion, just really throwing muck in that machine. What you also get is the hands down low. Now the hands down low is what Jeet Kune Do people would refer to as attack by drawing. So the hands down low, the head will be held forward, as you try and exploit that opportunity, the lean back happens and something's thrown. Something is thrown into that machine. Bam! So again, the attack by drawing, it's not that they're stupid. The hands are down low, the chin is forward because they have the attributes and the reflexes to get out of the way. What it does do, imagine someone that's very, very good at leg kicks. It makes that very good leg kicker forget about kicking your legs and hitting your chin. You know, they're drawing people in, they're drawing people in. So again, when the hands are low, you'll find the head is forward so they can lean back. They can lean back and counter attack. Boom, boom. So it's another important thing of Diaz Brothers style boxing is moving around, leave your head forward, then lean back to counter attack as you lean back or indeed to spring back with something else. So if you imagine that ball throwing motion, my head's forward, I lean back, throw the ball, lean back, throw the ball. You get really good mass and penetration as you come from the lean back into the lean forward. And it's something you see in traditional bare knuckle pugilism, especially shorter fighters with tighter guards like Daniel Mendoza. You're in forward, so you can lean back, avoid a strike, or lean back and attack on the withdrawal. So again, a lot of people have commented on that too, the similarities between the Diaz brothers boxing and Mendoza. But again, the attack by drawing is to lean the chin forward, but it is a perishable skill. You need the confidence, the speed, the awareness to pull that off, but it's something they do, the attack by drawing. One of their more combatively sound principles is to have the hands in this open mill, the open mill, and they're just fucking up any conscious thought about being able to strike because there's hands always touching your fists, always touching your fists, nudging them, grabbing them, you know, grabbing a bit of wrist, pushing down on the knuckles, stopping people from pulling off their superior striking. And then as soon as you get frustrated, they throw the ball into the gap. Frustrate, 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 throw the ball into the gap. So again, that throwing mechanism works really well of throwing shit into the machine. Another thing they're very good at is kazushi, the Japanese word for unbalancing people and unbalancing people can be physically pulling pushing shoving dragging those types of things it can also be emotional so what they're very good at is talking to you pissing you off annoying you disrupting your status quo disrupting your mental state you know and this is something that criminals are very good at criminals have some of the worst punches some of the worst punches okay but they have the best success because they throw the worst punch at the best time what I call Wenjitsu. They are the absolute masters of when to do the thing. So as they're mentally unbalancing you, swearing at you, belittling you, scaring you, that's when the shot comes in. And it doesn't matter if that shot is, you know, a Mike Tyson-esque rocket or a bag of spanners, doesn't matter because the timing is on point. And the timing is on point because people are mentally unbalanced. So the Diaz brothers are very good at using their words using their body language, you know, they'll hold up their fists, they'll swear at you and then hit you. You know, so they're moving, they'll swear and they'll hit you. Again, this isn't just being thuggish or being born in a bad area, you know, or having a bad attitude. There is some of that in play, but it's also very, very sound martial principles. You are applying Kazushi disruption. You are swearing, you are provoking. And as you swear or you provoke or you threaten or belittle or emasculate these people, you make them do stupid stuff. So, you know, Diaz Brothers are very famous for what they call the Stockton Slap. And so, you know, they'll pour, they'll pour, they'll pour. 
and they'll just give you a clip on the head. Boom, 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 boom. That does cause damage, and it has caused damage to opponents. But the main thing is really belittling. It's belittling to be slapped. It's emasculating. It makes you feel less than you are. So whilst you might have brilliant wrestling and brilliant boxing, as soon as you cut that slap, your immediate reaction is to go in and have it because you feel slighted. And soon as that instinctive reaction comes off the slap, boom, you throw the ball in the space. So you know they're moving, smothering, throwing that Stockton slap. As soon as they want to essentially respond to that, they're responding to the perceived slight, that's when the next shot can go into play. So again, very, very good use of Kazushi, unbalancing verbally in their positions, how they stand, my chin's forward, don't give a fuck, my hand's behind my back, you know, pushing you, shoving you, doing things that professional fighters don't do. Oh, the slap comes in, you feel mortally offended, you come in with something stupid, and you get hit. Play silly games, win silly prizes. But they're very, very good at it. What they're also very good at is drawing your attention to the opposite place that they're going to strike. So one of the famous things that the Diaz brothers do is they'll raise their fists up high. They'll raise their fists up high. They'll gradually, throughout the fight, get people thinking up here. So they'll move in, they'll put their hands up here. Whee! And they'll move forward. All of your mind, when hands go up, eyes follow them. Eyes are very good at tracking hands, especially when you're fighting. As soon as the hands go up, the attention goes up. So the deer's buzz will start, they'll be all cocky. Then they'll start to just plow forward with their hands up. People will similarly bring their own hands up, or at least their attention up. And it's at that moment, they throw the ball, which is that body shot. So from attention up here, completely smash it in. Doesn't have the particular sides of close in body work that others may have, but what it does do is it's drawing the attention one way up and then whoa, they've just thrown the ball, bam, got their knuckles really aligned into that target, which is lovely stuff. And what they'll also tend to do is they'll tend to flurry low and then throw a banger over the top. And one of the trademark elements of Diaz Brothers style boxing is that not everything has to have 100% behind it. A lot of people tend to put too much power behind every punch. The Diaz brothers are very good at pouring, so they'll touch, 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 smash. Touch, 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 smash. So again, they use speed to bring the attention in this instance down low, and then the final shot of the cavalcade will be a very powerful one. So again, much like bringing the attention up high, swearing, being a dick, just raising your guard, and then winging in down low. They'll also drop down low with these long range thrown punches in a flurry. Bam, bam, bam. And then the final one of the series will actually have the right source on it. So again, important is to not only vary your speed or your cadence, but also your power. Varying your power is very, very, very important. They have very, very good usage of stiff arming. Now, stiff arming is essentially when opponents hold out their fist or hold out their hand, and they use that to, again, throw shit in the machine. You're a highly tuned fighting machine. Pushing this in there, putting this in the face, holding this in the face can throw shit in someone's machine. It just disrupts their balance, their thinking. It's hard to really move your way around when there's some fucking thing in your face. Obviously, you need to have the wherewithal to withdraw it if people try and grab it, but it's also hugely annoying, hugely annoying. And even when people close distance, if you're good at stiff arming, you can tend to load up your rear hand shot and hold this away. So if you're good at parting your shoulders, this is really annoying and means that while your vision's obscured, a thrown ball-like shot is coming your way. Like so. So again, an important part of the Diaz Brothers style boxing. They'll also typically stiff arm, not just with their lead hand, that's relatively common in boxing and MMA, but they'll also stiff arm with their rear hand. So if you imagine if I've got a left hand, left leg forward, they'll put their right arm across, their right arm across, and then turn that into a long left hook. From here. So again, thing to experiment with is holding out that right hand, also brings the right hand into play. It does mean that you don't have it as necessarily that bomb to fire afterwards, 
but it is a slightly more unorthodox way to stiff arm. Putting this hand across, whop, and then being able to fire that shot in. It's a lovely piece of work. So stiff arming, both with your lead hand, throwing junk into the machine, or indeed with your rear hand, throwing junk into the machine, allows you to set up other things. So a left hand stiff arm opens the opportunity because of the lost vision to throw uppercuts, to throw overhands, to throw other stuff in that Diaz style, throw style punch. But you can also pull this off in more orthodox boxing style, but orthodox boxing tends to come at predictable angles. Whereas a thrown style punch like a Diaz will come at stupid angles and therefore catch you where you shouldn't be caught. So lead arm stiff arming, boom, boom, or rear arm stiff arming, and then as soon as you swap, bam, you're always trading. You're trading this bit of junk in the machine for that bit of junk in the machine. One, boom, from here. Nice and lovely. So again, being able to cycle up the level of power and damage is important. Being able to mess up their status quo, apply Kazushi, put junk in their machine by stiff arming, using cycling to keep your arms fluid, to keep your weapons in the game. Okay, another thing is half arm hitting. So in pugilistic talk, we talk, talk about half arm hitting. So a full arm hit in the pugilistic sense is a shot that comes from very close to your body. So whether it's down here or up here, it's a shot that comes from your body. Half arm hitting is where your arms are halfway out and then you fire the shot. Half arm hit, full arm hit. There's more power in a full arm hit, but there is more speed as you're closer to the target. So I'd say not so much speed, but greater proximity to a target. So half arm hitting from here, full arm hitting from here. So if you imagine a tight modern boxer is throwing full arm blows most of the time. A boxer like Tyson Fury, that might be annoying, leave this hand out, he will be doing half arm hitting. Not as powerful, but it lands on target time and time again. The Diaz brothers are masters of this. And again, it's all about throwing junk in the machine, throwing the volume. So they'll throw what I call spring punches. So as opposed to a traditional tight jab, they will do the cardinal sin of flaring the elbow and they'll just pop and they'll pop like a spring, pop, pop, like so. These spring punches, pop, 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 pop. All of this is essentially just a slightly more dynamic stiff arm. Again, it's nearly always to throw junk into the machine before a shot comes in. These long looping thrown shots. But these springy punches, just a dynamic stiff arm. Again, it's not that, you know, they will cause some facial damage, especially bare knuckle. So, you know, I'm doing them lightly on the bob just so I can focus on talking to you guys, but you're still, still throwing a little bit of sauce on them. But the main point is throwing the junk into the machine so you can land something like that. So again, yeah, those half arm blows are very important and they come very readily from this milling, from this cycling stance. From here, just always chucking something into the psychological mix so they're always thinking about it. it's hard to think it's hard to make a plan when a fist is just chipping you in the face chipping you in the face even if it's not causing massive damage it's very annoying anyone that's got a cat in the morning it doesn't hurt you but it's fucking annoying isn't it and you can't think of anything else in the world you could have been dreaming about lying on a beach in tahiti with hula girls but if that cat's going Fucking annoying, you cannot concentrate, you cannot focus, you just want to kill the cat. Same with the Diaz spring punches, just pop, 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 pop. Just fast fluid, not overloading them. Just throwing junk in your machine so that eventually they throw one of these thrown punches into your jaw, into your body. And again, it comes at an unorthodox angle. Because of the throw style, it tends to come in and around more traditional guards. They tend to sneak round the perimeter fence, which is lovely. So those spring spring jabs. So you think about it, you've got dynamic spring jabs, spring crosses. You've got stiff arming for its front, which is a bit more traditional, and rear, which is a bit more unorthodox, but therefore unexpected. You've got these things. And that allows you these long, seemingly lazy body hooks. 
and headshots just looping around, which is nice and lovely. Okay, another fundamental part of the Diaz Brothers game is essentially braggadocio. It's extreme confidence. Extreme confidence. Extreme confidence is very threatening to other people. If you are feeling psychologically, physically sound and on point, if you show no evident fear, that can be very scary for people that are used to causing fear. So the Diaz brothers, they're mortals. They're like everyone else. You punch them in the face, it's gonna hurt. You take them down, it's gonna hurt. But they show through their emotions, through their mental kazushi game, they have that right braggadocio. They have that right fighting spirit, which dampens the opponent's fighting spirit. They look like they don't give a fuck. They do give a fuck. They care about winning, they care about money, they care about respect. But it looks to you, the man that's fighting them, like they don't, like they're giving it all this. That's where these elements of mental kazushi, the swearing, the getting in the head, these spring jabs, these you know, apparent lack of care is in fact evidence of extreme care. Their apparent lack of care, their apparent lack of technique and science is in reality their extreme delivery of technique and science. This throwing garbage into the machine, throwing garbage into the machine allows them to land shots from an orthodox angle in an orthodox way and you always got knocked out by the thing you don't see coming. So if you're going to practice this Diaz Brothers style, throwing the ball is a great way to practice. Throw the ball, throw the ball. Feel, just feel it in your knuckles how often you can land with a decent striking surface with these star shots. And again, when it comes to body shots, think of an underhand or a horizontal throw. Yep. You do tend to get very decent knuckle alignment. You do tend to get pretty good organic body alignment and mass delivery just because the body's so good at throwing things. So it's an interesting and dynamic way of striking. Drawing the attention up high to strike low is very, very important. Diverting attention with flurries down low to strike up high is very important. Being able to vary full power and half power is very important. So not throwing everything behind each shot. Confuse people, build up the combinations, low power, low power, low power, high power. This is what allows them to overwhelm the defenses of more traditional orthodox fighters. It's overwhelming. This, this probing, this parrying, this milling, you know, this compression of the hands, this is all essentially overwhelming the defences. Overwhelming the defences, touching, being annoying, compressing. It's all throwing junk in the machine so that when you spot the golden opportunity, you can then throw. And that throwing style of punch allows you to exploit an opportunity very, very, very quickly. So these are some of the most important aspects of Diaz Brothers Boxing. There's lots of great videos out there for it, but I would say it's a great study. It's a great way to see the relevance of traditional pugilism and modern boxing, modern boxing for MMA. And there are some many great benefits for your self-protection oriented boxing, some of which include being able to naturally throw from positions where your hands normally are. So if you're standing at the bar, if you're at the cash machine, you often don't get the time to throw a very scientific punch, but that throw style punch, you know, it's something where you can get pretty decent penetration and delivery, very easy. There are some drawbacks when it comes to, you know, opening yourself up. You need the right physical attributes. You need the right mental attributes to pull it off. If you're a nervous boxer, if you don't have supreme confidence, this is going to be hard for you to pull off. But if you do have a little seed of that particular attribute, if you do have confidence, if you do have something about you, this is a great way to mess up people's more traditional boxing, being unorthodox, being unpredictable, raising attention up high, raising attention down low, throwing junk in their machines so and messing with their game plan providing optimum Kazushi so you can finally deliver that knockout strike or that knockout flurry, which is a great example of Diaz Brothers style boxing. I do encourage you to go through their videos, go through all of their content and give it a play. You might find something you enjoy.